everyone, my name's Amy, welcome to my channel. This is my first video and I thought I'd kick it off by talking to you about African Land Snail Care. So I'd first like to start off by saying that I am by no means an expert on snails. Um, I've owned them previously for a few years and I've only recently in the last few months got back into owning them. So yeah, um, I go off other people's experiences and definitely be sure to research your particular species. So the ones I'll be talking to you about today are Arca Catina marginata ovums. So they have different requirements to possibly other snails such as Fulica. So yeah, giant African land snails. Well, the name's pretty self-explanatory. They are obviously giant snails and they originate from Africa. They are also hermaphrodites, meaning that they possess both female and male genitalia. So if you're keeping more than one, be prepared. They will make any eggs you will need to get rid of. That is in the form of sadly crushing the eggs. Now these have been used as feeder snails for reptiles and for aquatics. So that's another good way of actually getting rid of the eggs. Another option is freezing. So the Fulica species especially, because they breed so profusely, they, they can have up to around 500 eggs. These ones, these don't tend to have as many. They have larger eggs and they seem to lay less often and in less numbers. So yeah, they do breed that profusely that in their native country, they are actually considered kind of a pest and they're actually used as bushmeat so they eat them. So this video is just gonna focus on the basic care for these um, little guys and I like to break it down so it's nice and easy into around five steps. So number one, I will be talking about housing. Number two, I will be talking about equipment. Number three, diet. Number four, I shall be talking about husbandry. And for number five, I will just be talking about miscellaneous little things that you might find interesting. So moving on to housing. There are two um, viable options really. So you could either use a modified aquarium or what I prefer to use are the really useful boxes and you'll find them in most um, department stores. So it's going to be something, excuse how dirty they are, the snails have been in them. It's going to be something like this. And they've got the lockable lids. So with both types of enclosures, these guys need a safe and secure lid. You've already got that with a really useful box, but if you do take the option of using a glass aquarium, I would suggest making your own um, lid. And I would also try and make some kind of latch to hook it on somehow to the aquarium. But instead of faffing around with all that, I tend to use these boxes. And the reason being is that these boxes are quite soft. And my thinking is, as I also own aquatic snails, when my aquatic snails start climbing up the glass, and these do as well, up on the sides and up on the ceiling of the enclosure, if they fall, they may crack these beautiful shells. My aquatic snails have done that quite a lot in the glass aquariums and they've just broken off. I've got rabbit snails and they've got quite a pointy tip and they've broken off a few of them from falling. So to avoid that, um, I, I would suggest using one of these plastic boxes. They also retain heat really well, uh, whereas glass aquariums don't seem to. Nothing wrong with using a glass aquarium and I don't want to put you off because there are some really nice glass aquariums and you can visualize the snails better. Um, you can still see the snails through these boxes, but it is nice to see them through glass. You can make a really, really pretty setup for these with an aquarium and it's completely safe as long as you make a decent lid for it with enough ventilation. That is also very important. So with the really useful boxes, um, your ventilation, you could drill holes into the sides of the boxes like I have. This way you obviously are making sure that they have access to fresh air and the air in there isn't getting too stagnant with the soil and everything. It's just nice to keep a nice flow of air throughout there. Now you want to also be careful that you're not putting too many holes in because these in particular require higher um, 
temperatures and humidities than most other African land snails. And you could lose a lot of the heat or the humidity with too much ventilation. So to combat that, I have mm -hmm. seen people that if they have put too many holes in their tub or anything, it doesn't matter. You could just cling film a couple of those up and that way, obviously you're gonna reduce how much heat is being lost. When they're small, you wanna keep them in a smaller enclosure because they exert quite a bit of energy moving around in their tank. So next I wanted to chat to you about the equipment that you're gonna need and you're gonna need this um, in advance of bringing your snail home. You're just gonna need a heat mat, a thermostat, two digital thermometers and a hygrometer. Now your hygrometer is going to be measuring humidity and they're quite simple. Um, if you look at them, most of them have like a low, medium and high range. Just make sure, especially for old ones, that it's kept in a high range. And then two digital thermometers. The reason being is that you're gonna want one inside the enclosure, but next to where your heat source is going to be. So that's gonna measure your hot spot within the enclosure. And that for these snails is going to be between 26 to 27 degrees. The other one you're gonna to wanna to put furthest away from the heat source. So there I normally have my, I think it's around 24, 22, 24 degrees at the, at the lowest level. I drop the temperature down to 21 at night. I do that by use of a timer. This is all hooked up to a thermostat. Now the reason you're going to want that is to obviously make sure that your heat mat doesn't start reaching um, uncontrollable levels for any sort of reason, whether there's a malfunction in the mat or anything. And yeah, that could be quite serious because you could end up with, obviously, worst case scenario, you could catch your house on fire, but it can also burn through, especially um, these plastic boxes and injure your snails, which is never any good. So your heat mats, I would recommend putting them on the side of your enclosure. Now, many of you who have kept reptiles before will know about keeping them underneath. You're going to want it on the side. Now, some keepers are arguing that, you know, well, not arguing. They think that it's OK to be underneath, which is fine. You know, if they've done their research and everything, that's fine. But basically, if you've got your heat mat underneath, it's going to be heating up that substrate and it's going to be retaining a hell of a lot of heat. And you don't know how hot this substrate is getting. Also, it's drying out, so that's no good for the snails because obviously they like a nice, damp, moist environment, especially to keep their skin nice and healthy. So you've got to be careful if you are keeping it underneath that there's not going to be any dry spots. Also, the other reason um, people probably differ on opinions with this is because I don't think we 100% know why they're burrowing. Obviously, yes, there are nocturnal species so they burrow during the day and come out in the night so i don't know if they are burrowing because they're looking for a nice cool spot um to rest during you know peak temperature hours during the day or are they burrowing to keep warm some people think they kept burrowing to keep warm um that doesn't really register in my head seeing as if you dig a hole outside so you start digging it's gonna get cooler you know, and yeah, I, I, I just don't understand that. But by all means, if there's any research articles out there, point them my way and I will be willing to adapt the way that I look after them if there's any evidence backing it up. Anyway, heat mat debate over. So yeah, also um, with their enclosure, it'd be nice not to just give them the bare minimum. They do need soil, as I said. You can buy um, bricks of uh, coconut fibre, um, kaya soil, I think it's called. Uh, it's just a compressed brick of this coconut fibre stuff that you add water to and it expands. You did a little wiggle then on my bingo wing. And fluff it up, make that as a base for your snails. Now they want a nice thick layer. So I think I've got a picture of what mine looks like. So it's enough just for them to bury and to be honest, you're never really going to want to change out that soil. So it is pretty much a one time purchase. Uh, you probably will end up buying again, to be honest, but that's normally because when you're taking things out to clean and stuff, you're going to lose some of that soil over time. So, yeah, you'll, you'll have to replenish some of it. And um, yeah, so uh, also, like I said, I use a lot of moss in mine to retain humidity. You can buy plenty of that online. Um, 
I think it's the sphagnum moss. I think that's how you say it. But yeah, so I get that. And you want to give them some hides as well. So anything you're going to put in there, try and make sure that it's not hard. So like I said, I use the really useful boxes because they're quite soft. And the same goes for if they're crawling across the top and they fall. You don't want them falling into like a ceramic dish or anything. So I use plastic, um, like shallow plant pot the things you put under plant pots to catch the water yeah i use them i will use that for their water and for their food but actually i've got a ceramic one in there at the moment you'll probably point out but i do try and cover the edges of that with with the soil and also i've got pebbles in there so i'm probably being a bit of a hypocrite saying that you know but I, I am paranoid about them drowning so that's why the pebbles are in also, you can use a cork bark. You can buy a lot of that online as well. So that'll be nice for some hides for them. That also retains a lot of moisture. So they do like to hide. You could either go, I would love to do a live plant um, enclosure for them. I would absolutely love to do that, but I cannot keep plants for the life of me. So the best they get is a few fake plants, which is absolutely fine anyway. It gives them a little bit more texture and stuff in there. Make sure they're soft though, like the nice silk ones and try if you can to get them from like a reptile supplier excuse me um just so you know that they are animal safe gulliver and i have frodo and sam this one's frodo this one's sam so two really important things that snails are going to need in their diet are calcium and protein most hobbyists will be using cuttlefish bone as their main calcium source and they have a little mouth and it's called a radula and they have ribbons of um, thousands of chitinous teeth and these kind of gnaw away, it's called rasping, at the cuttlefish and you can hear it if you listen really carefully and it's really really sweet. I also put oyster shell flakes into their substrate and apparently it's quite good for for their shell. Wow! And also if you're familiar with keeping reptiles you might be familiar with the calcium carbonate powder now you can sprinkle that over their meals or you can also check out my next video on calci cakes protein is also very important for um, growth in any animal so these require around 40 to 45 percent of their diet to be protein that's per week so i tend to feed mine a pre-made protein mix now you can get these from etsy from different suppliers on ebay i've got my own supplier that i buy from all the time and they go absolutely wild for their protein mix so i feed this these are around 20 percent uh, protein and i feed this twice a week to them and they they absolutely love it you can also provide them protein in the form of dried mealworms now there are safe foods and there are unsafe foods for snails. I'm just briefly going to give you a couple of examples. So you shouldn't really be feeding snails anything at all from the onion family. So that includes obviously onions and leeks. Uh, I would stick mainly to leafy greens and also you want everything to be raw. So you want raw fruit and raw veg. They particularly like um lettuce what else do they like honey carrots. they like peppers. carrots oh peppers yes we do feed them peppers quite a bit they have had strawberries they have had apples <laughs> so yeah they have quite a variety now there is a list as long as my arm of safe and unsafe foods for snails to eat so what I do is I jump onto the Facebook groups, which are absolutely fab. I would really suggest looking up some um, African land snail Facebook groups. And within these groups, there's, there's some really nice people on there too. They have files section and they tend to have a list then of any unsafe foods, safe foods, also safe plants and unsafe plants so that's more to do with if you're going to be setting up a uh, planted type enclosure for them i know some things that they won't like and what's that grapefruit orange well it's a good job she said that because this is another little debate so there's a lot of information out there saying that snails should not actually have any citrus a lot of citrus fruits actually have the same ph as tomatoes and we feed them tomatoes 
So that's quite interesting and I, I'll have to do a little bit of research on that myself. Let me know down below if you've got on with feeding your citrus actually. That would be really helpful for me. These guys, as I said, like a nice moist environment. So twice a day I mist my snails with a little misting bottle like this. And I give them a really good misting. And I also provide them with a shallow water dish. So I've got some videos now on how to maintain their enclosure. When it comes to cleaning out your snails, it's pretty easy. You just want to start off with taking out all the little bits and pieces that you've got in there for them. And have a little forage around then for the snails. Uh, do this as carefully as possible, obviously, and place them somewhere safe. So once you've finished picking out all the bits, I tend to separate the uh, moss from the rest of the substrate just because I don't like to get it all mixed in. And I've also got some chip-ins on the other side which are nice and damp. So as you can see, I'm just going around the entire enclosure checking for eggs um, at the same time aerating the soil with a little shovel or you can always use your hands so pop all the moss back um, start bringing back all your decorations give it a little wipe down when wiping down I would only use water I wouldn't use any detergents or anything that could be harmful or contain any chemicals so once you've got your enclosure looking how you want you could add in some potted herbs put everything back Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably have seen my picture of my snails in a little teeny weeny bath because I'm a complete saddo. And yeah, I have a little ceramic bath that I like to bath my snails in. Pop them in, always making sure that their breathing hole is out of the water as well as their little mouths. There are some people out there that are worried about the risk of contracting uh, meningitis from these snails. So I've done my own research into this and working in microbiology that is obviously something that would be quite interesting. And there is a parasite called Angiostrongylosis cantonensis and this is actually a parasite that's present in the pulmonary arteries of rats. This tends to be out in their native country of Africa. So over here, rats are not really known to be carrying this parasite. These are eaten out in Africa. Now, if you're eating snails with this parasite, that is going to be transmitted onto a human host. And this goes on to progress into an eosinophilic meningitis, which is pretty nasty. So. I can kind of understand why people would have concerns about handling these snails. If they're captive bred, you are pretty much eliminating that risk altogether. So don't go being worried about contracting some sort of rat lungworm. It probably isn't going to happen. And you're not going to die from holding these snails. Another thing that I quite like to do with these snails is to take them outside for a little bit of the sun. So I wouldn't suggest having any UVB bulbs in your tank. First of all, they're going to heat up and if these are going to be climbing over them, you're going to burn your snails. If you would like to see more of my snails, I would suggest you head over to my Instagram and give me a follow there. I'm very active on Instagram and post 
ridiculous amount of pictures of my snails. And that includes my aquatic snails too, because I'm a little bit nuts over rabbit snails. So yeah, you'll be able to keep up to date with my newest additions. I've got another one coming tomorrow that I can't wait to show you. And she's another Margie. And she's a slightly different subspecies um, than Ovum. I'm not telling you anymore. You're going to have to find out by following. And what should we ask them to do if they like the video? Subscribe. Oh my god, subscribe. Hit the bell button.